In this clip, it's gonna be all about Campus Board. Campus Board is a training tool developed by Wolfgang Gielich in the end of the 80s, and it's one of the most efficient training tool, but at the same time, one of the most dangerous when it comes to injuries. Why I don't recommend it? Most importantly, climbing is not only a physical sport, but it's mostly about knowing what to do, how to use the power that you have. If you start campusing, if you gain your power too quickly, it's pretty much impossible to learn this efficiency of climbing. And besides that, it's just way too dangerous. Ideally, you should be climbing at least two years, you should be older than 15 years, and you should be climbing at least 7B route. As you don't use any feet on the campus board, the load and the pressure on the fingers is much higher than on the normal climbing. For me, there are two ways how to use campus board in terms of power training and power endurance training. Today is going to be all about power training. That means less exercises, less moves and longer breaks. It might feel we, you don't really end up doing that much, but the longer breaks are really important as you really want to give the highest quality possible in every exercise. The more you are able to give, the more efficient the training gets. You should go campusing when you are fresh, well rested and warmed up. Very often there is a very bad habit for most of the climbers that they might go bouldering for two hours and then they crush themselves in the end of the session on the campus board. This is dangerous. So on the power session on the campus board I do each exercise only once. Giving it all in any kind of training is what really counts. <laughs> Let's go training! Alright, so one of my favorite exercises on the campus board is 159. For me it's kind of a test. If I can do 159, then I think that I'm kind of fit and strong. So good, the test was successful, I even did it two times in a row. Obviously most of the viewers can't do 159, but they can do shorter moves. So if it's way too hard you go just 1, 2, 3. If you might want to make it a little harder you can go 1, 3, 5. The next step would be 1, 4, 7, so choose the right level. Obviously you should train your arms evenly. So when I do 159 on left arm, the next exercise would be to do 159 on my right arm. Nevertheless, my right arm is always a little bit weaker. So if I do a certain exercise on my left arm, often I can't do it on the right arm, but I just try my best. The other way how to make the exercise different or more interesting is try to go as statically as possible. Other favorite exercise is double dinos. For campusing beginners I definitely recommend to do double dinos only on the big holds because the smaller holds you take the more aggressive it is for your fingers. And obviously again the longer reaches you make the harder it gets. The other idea could be using less fingers, so either three fingers, two fingers or even monos. Warning only for experienced climbers. So the most basic campus board is just like a medium sized edges. 
but the better camping board you have, the more holes you have. And not only like different crimps, slopers or jugs, but it can be in different width. So these walls are that hard because they're not only slopey, but they're kind of far apart, so it works your shoulders as well. Mm.